Welcome everyone to the fourth and final podcast for chapter 27, day 31 on bacteria and archaea. In this podcast, we're going to talk about the role that bacteria and archaea play in our biosphere. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. This objective is only has two points in it, and I, I don't think it'll take us too long to get through this. The first one is talking about chemical recycling. The, the role that the prokaryotes play in chemical recycling, at least a major role they play, is in acting as decomposers. As decomposers, they break down dead organisms and waste products. So this has the advantage of getting rid of this, this these components, but in, in terms of chemical recycling, it's really important because that helps release some necessary chemicals back into the environment to be used again. Permit, particularly, we're thinking about like carbage, carbon and nitrogen. plus other chemicals as well. Without these very small organisms, these microscopic organisms, acting as these decomposers, life on Earth would not exist as we know it. Another important role they have in chemical recycling is that the autotrophs, these, will, these autotrophs make carbon compounds like sugars, and then as these autotrophs, like the cyanobacteria, as they are consumed, that carbon that they make, those sugars they make, move up the um, food chain. In addition, microbes such as cyanobacteria which undergo photosynthesis generate um, oxygen. They make oxygen that other aerobic organisms use. These are just some of the ways that bacteria help in, chemo in the chemical recycling of compounds that we need to continue to have life as we know it on Earth. So bacteria play a really important part in our ecosystem in the role, as, in the role of symbiosis. Symbiosis is just an interaction between two species and these species live in the same area. We can break symbiosis down into more specific terms, and that's what we'll do. Mutualism. We'll see if we can get them all on this board here. Mutualism. Mutualism is when this interaction between the two species, both species benefit. So we'll say both So some examples would be the bacteria in our, well, I won't say ours, but I'll say in digestive tracts. So bacteria are found in our stomachs, they're found in the intestines of a termite, in the stomach of a cow. In all these instances, the bacteria benefit by having essentially a free meal. When we eat something, they gain nutrients from that. We gain something because they help us break down specific products. For instance, the bacteria in a cow helps them break down the cellulose in the grass they eat. 
Same thing with the bacteria that are found in termites. It helps them break down the cellulose found in the wood. Both species benefit in these kinds of relationships. Next, let's talk about commensalism. Commensalism is when one species in this relationship benefits and the other is neither harmed or benefited. So let's write commensalism here again. Probably the best example of commensalism that we can that I can think of is an interaction between two different bacteria in our colon. So this is, you know, in our colon, we have facultative. anaerobes and we have obligate so let's remember what facultative anaerobes are remember they can survive in the presence of oxygen and they can metabolize oxygen but if ox oxygen isn't there they'll also survive by fermentation or anaerobic respiration Obligate anaerobes, on the other hand, cannot have oxygen present. Oxygen is poison to them. So in this commensal relationship, the facultative anaerobe removes all the oxygen from the environment, creating an oxygen-free environment. This then allows or creates a, an environment without oxygen, which allows the obligate anaerobes to survive. So in this relationship, the obligate anaerobes receive a huge benefit by the facultative anaerobes removing all the oxygen. It's less clear how the facu facultative anaerobes receive any benefit. So in this case, the obligate anaerobes receive a benefit of an oxygen-free environment, and the effect on the facultative anaerobe seems to be neutral. We may find out later on that there is some sort of benefit passed on to these facultative anaerobes, but as of now, we, we don't know what that is. So this does appear to be a a symbiotic relationship of commensalism. You can also think of this as pathogenic. This is when one species benefits and the other is harmed. We can find lots of examples of this in our ecosystem, but we'll list a few here. Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Causes tuberculosis in humans. The bacterium benefits by infecting us and surviving. However, we are harmed because of the disease tuberculosis. Another example is the bacterium that's found in ticks. So ticks can carry a bacterium. This tick, when exposed to humans, will transfer this bacterium into humans and the humans can get Lyme disease. Now be careful, I'm not saying all ticks carry Lyme disease. I'm saying the ticks that have this bacterium, when they um, bite you, they can, do, they can um, cause Lyme disease. We could come up with many, many other examples, but these are just two examples of pathogenic uh, bacteria. This ends our fourth podcast and our last podcast for this day. If you have any questions, please let, let us know. Thank you. Bye.